Hey, hey, eighth grade. So our learning target today is I can use Pythagorean theorem to find an unknown side length. So exact same learning target as yesterday. What's different about today's work is we're going to look at some real world problems. So it's still going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Still have to identify the legs and the hypotenuse like we did yesterday. But we're going to put some real world application in this particular problem. Okay. So remember the key to the Pythagorean theorem is that you have to have a right triangle. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What has to be true is this has to be a right triangle. So in this first problem, we're going to assume that we have a right triangle. And in this problem, we're going to assume that there is a student here and where the star is. And the student is going to, to we're going to kind of talk about the distance between this, um, or the options the student has from getting from point A to point B, we'll say. I'm going to use some different letters there. I don't want to use A and B, or otherwise you'll get them confused with legs. So we'll say from point X to point Y. Option one is students can, student can go down, turn the corner at 90 degrees, and go over. Option one. The other option that the student could take to get from, a, from X to Y is the student could take the hypotenuse, which we learned yesterday. So our hypotenuse is the C, hypotenuse. This is my hypotenuse. The other two sides are known as legs. So we would want to know what would be the fastest way for the student to travel. So we would say leg A, leg B, and hypotenuse C. So if I put some numbers in now, we're talking yards. Let's talk about the total distance the student can travel. So if I'm looking for the hypotenuse, that's going to be my unknown in our work right now. I'm going to say that leg A is approximately equal to six yards. This is six yards. And leg B is going to be approximately equal to eight yards. So if that student goes six yards plus, or pardon me, eight yards plus six yards, that student would travel 14 yards turning the corner, or what is the distance of the hypotenuse instead? Would that be a shorter route? You should have learned in yesterday's work that the hypotenuse is always the shorter route. So using substitution, we're going to take the A out and put the six in. Six squared, six yards there. Take the B out and put the eight in. And the C, the hypotenuse is still in the unknown, so there's our C squared. So we have six squared plus eight squared equals C squared. So we get 36 plus 64 equals c squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we have 36 plus 64 is 100 equals c squared. <clears throat> so sub solving, getting rid of that power of 2. Let's take the square root, copy, paste. We get 10 equals c. So the hypotenuse equals c. So we have the hypotenuse is equal to 10 yards. So this is 10 yards. So let's talk kind of about what's going on here. Student has two options. Student can take the route of the legs, six, six plus, or pardon me, eight, I keep saying calling that six. Eight plus six is 14, or the hypotenuse is just 10. Clearly the hypotenuse is a shorter route by four yards. Students should always take the hypotenuse. If that's an option, take a shortcut, a diagonal, faster route, then going eight yards down, turning corner, and go six yards over. So that's kind of some important work about what a hypotenuse is. So here's a great example of that. So here's a football analogy. You can maybe kind of visualize that there is a right triangle here. So here's our right triangle. Clearly, this is going to be our hypotenuse. There's my right angle. There's my hypotenuse. And same idea, the, the, foot, the, the defender needs to take the hypotenuse to cut that guy off. If the defender went the long way and went 30 yards, turned the corner 40 yards, that's 70 yards, or take the hypotenuse. Let's go ahead and watch this football analogy. See if that link will work. There we go. Let's watch this analogy. You can just sit back and watch. I would make that bigger if I can. Maybe I can stretch it out and make it bigger here. I'm not getting any sound on that. NFL, a receiver or running back making a beeline for the end zone with a defender in top pursuit. You identify the ball carrier. From there, you want to close the distance between yourself and the ball carrier as quickly as possible. They have to choose what direction and speed to run so that they get to the same place at the same time as the runner and can make the tackle. In football, the path a defender must take to intercept a ball carrier is called the angle of pursuit. 
According to John Zeitman, an automotive engineer at Clemson University, this path is also a perfect illustration of a fundamental equation in geometry called the Pythagorean Theorem. Discovered by the Greek mathematician Pythagoras more than 1,700 years ago. Pythagorean Theorem is uh, a basic theorem in plane geometry or Euclidean geometry that relates the lengths of the sides of any triangle where one of the angles is 90 degrees. It's called a right triangle. On a right triangle, the two adjacent sides, A and B, are called the legs. The longer side, opposite the right angle, C, is called the hypotenuse. The Pythagorean theorem simply states A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The square of the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse, is equal to the sum of the squares of the length of the other two sides. Relating this to football, let's say the ball carrier is heading for the end zone, 40 yards away. The defender stands 30 yards away and needs to intercept it. If these two distances are the legs of a right triangle, then the distance the defender needs to run is the hypotenuse. Using the Pythagorean theorem, 30 yards times 30 yards added to 40 yards times 40 yards will give the length of a hypotenuse square. Then the actual length, take the square root. 40 squared plus 30 squared is equal to 2,500, which is 50 squared. So the distance of the hypotenuse is 50 yards. It's got to be precise what it feels like to see it in, and you have to take a right angle, especially in coverage. NFL players must react instinctively to cover this distance and also gauge how fast they need to run to match their opponent's speed. The defender, now if he chooses that angle of pursuit, he says, okay, I've got to cover this distance in the same amount of time it takes the runner to cover this distance. And if you're chasing a, a bad guy, uh, like a martial boss or, you know, some of those guys that, that can really burn, uh, you know, if you take a, the wrong angle, you're done. The defender's angle of pursuit can be the difference between a touchdown and a game-saving tackle. It's also a perfect illustration of the properties of a right triangle and the ABCs of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, guys, so that's a great example of when we would take that hypotenuse, that faster length, that diagonal. So let's go ahead and solve this problem here. We've already kind of seen it in the video, <clears throat> but let's work through it now. So we'd say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. <clears throat> that only works for right triangles, and you know that the hypotenuse always has to be your c. So here's my right angle. Side opposite is called the hypotenuse, my c. So that is unknown in this particular problem. I'm just going to leave it a c for now. You can put an x in if you wanted. The legs are my A and B. It doesn't matter which ones you use as A and which one is use, you use as B. I'm going to use this as A and that as B. I think in the video they did it the opposite way. No problem there because you're just adding them together. In addition, it has the community property involved. You could switch it. So we have 40 squared plus 30 squared equals C squared. 40 times 40 is 1,600. 30 times 30 is 900 equals C squared. So we're going to go ahead and add those up. We have 1,600 plus 900 gives us 2,500 equals c squared. Now my job is to get rid of this power of 2. To do that, I take the square root of that, copy, paste. So we get 50 equals c. So we would find out that the, the length of that hypotenuse is equal to 50 yards. So this here is equal to 50 yards. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right, so clearly the football player wants to take that hypotenuse. Because if they went the long rate, way, it would be 30 plus 40. That's 70 yards. That's too, too many yards. You'd lose 20 yards there. And plus, just obvious mental math says you should take that hypotenuse of the, di the diagonals faster. So here's a real-world example, question number three. Can a circular tramp trampoline with a diameter of 16 feet fit through a doorway that is 10 feet high and 8 feet wide? So we're going to go ahead and draw a picture here of a doorway. Always draw a picture. So here's our doorway. <clears throat> it says the door is 10 feet wide, 10 feet high, and 8 feet wide. We have this circular trampoline. We're going to assume that we're going to take the legs off the trampoline. 
So taking the trampoline, we want to know, can the trampoline fit in the diagonal? The okay. diameter of the trampoline is 16 feet. Will it fit is the question. So we need to know about the length of this doorway. Can this work? So this is kind of a giant question mark. All right, so we would say in our scenario here, we would say a squared plus b squared equals c squared, of course. We want to know what is the length of this distance. Our trampoline is 16 feet, but the actual doorway is that unknown. We're not sure what the length of the doorway is. We need it to be 16 feet or less in order for the trampoline to fit. So as a substitute, I'm going to substitute an 8 in for a. So this is going to be my a. A 10 in for b. And my hypotenuse is going to be unknown. We know it has to be 16 feet or less in order for it to fit. We're going to check to see, using the Pythagorean theorem, what is the length of the doorway? We know the trampoline is 16, but what's the doorway? So we get a 64 plus a 100 equals x squared. Next step then would be take 64 and add 100. So we'd have 64 plus 100 is 164 equals x squared. We have to get rid of that power of 2. So my power there would be... A, t a square of 2. We're going to take the square root, copy paste of both sides. So we end up with x approximately equal, equals 12.8 feet. So we know that the doorway's length right here is 12.8 feet. So will the trampoline fit through that? So if the doorway is 12.8 feet, will the trampoline fit? That's what you should be talking about right now or thinking about. So as it said here, it says that the diameter of a trampoline has the diameter of 16 feet. Is it going to fit through a doorway that is 12.8 uh, feet? The answer should be no, it's not going to fit. So no, it will not fit because we have only, the doorway is only 12.8 feet long. The trampoline is 16.8 or 16 feet. It is not going to fit. Okay, next example here. We have a maintenance worker. Who needs to repair a light fixture? So let's take a look at what's going on here in this bottom problem. Let's draw a picture of what's going on. A maintenance worker, worker needs to repair a light fixture mounted on the top of the building. So we have this building here. So we have this building here. And so they need to repair a light fixture mounted on the top of the building. So here's our building. Let's go ahead and visualize this right angle that's happening here. We have a nice right angle, 90 degree angle, which says right away Pythagorean theorem's kicking in here. She leans a 20 foot ladder. So go ahead and visualize this ladder. You maybe want to even put the rungs on the ladder. It's 20 feet long. It's five feet from the base of the building. And what we want to know is how far up the ladder does it reach up the wall? So the ladder is 20 feet long. It's five feet out from the base. We just don't know how tall the ladder is. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Make sure we identify the hypotenuse. See, here's my right angle symbol. The hypotenuse is 20. As I start to solve them, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we have 5 squared plus x squared equals 20 squared. So we're going to put a 5 in for a. X is going to go in for B, and of course, this is my C, my hypotenuse. It's going to turn into hand method. 5 squared is 25. <clears throat> plus X squared equals 400. So we have 25 plus X squared equals 400. Hand method, so we're going to take our hand, cover the variable, anything attached. We're going to subtract 25, copy, paste. All right, as we start to solve then, whoops, what's going on here? As I start to solve then, so we end up with x squared equals 375. My job is to get rid of this power that's here. Power of 2, to get rid of the power of 2, we take the square root of both sides. So I should be taking the square root of both sides on this step here. We take the square root of x squared, square root of 375, and we get 10.36 feet. This ladder then is 19.36 feet. I think I said 10 by mistake there, sorry. 19.36 feet high up the building. That would be your answer to that question. 19.36 feet tall, the ladder there. All right, moving on to the next problem, question number five then. 
Question number five. Suppose the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the square root of 90. So this one's going to be a little bit tricky here. So the hypotenuse is the square root of 90. you got to have that square root in there. The whole thing, that square root. <clears throat> the legs are equal. So this side is the same as that side. We just don't know what the value is. We're going to call it x and x. So find the legs around your answer to the nearest hundredth. Looks like we're going to get a decimal possibly on this answer. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That happens every time we have a right triangle, which we do. Here's my right angle symbol. This is my hypotenuse. My hypotenuse is the square root of 90. And we are going to have to square that. So I'm going to put that all in a parenthesis. Now my legs are the x's. So a and b, it doesn't matter which one you do is a and b. We've learned that all the way through this unit. So we're going to do substitution x squared and x squared. So we have x squared plus x squared equals the square root of 90 squared. So we end up with two of those. So we have two x squareds equals the square root of 90 squared. So we have a power of two and a square cancel and we get 90. Solving then, hand method, take my hand, cover the variable, anything attached. We're going to divide by two, copy, paste. So we get x squared equals 90 divided by 2 is 45. x squared equals 45. 90 divided by 2. My job is to get the power of 2 alone right now, so I'm going to take the square root, copy, paste. So we get x equals plus or minus, plus or minus 6.71. So each one of these is approximately 6.71. 6.71 because they're the same. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now if that was confusing, I would go back and watch that step by step. Make sure you're understanding what's going on there because we have, end up having two variables in that problem. You have to combine like terms on this step. Go back and look at this step. We actually had to combine like terms here. 1x squared and 1x squared is 2x squared. So divide by 2, copy, paste, and then get rid of that power using the square root, copy, paste. All right, guys, last problem of the day, question number 6. <clears throat> it says to find the area of the triangle below. In order to find the area of a triangle, you need to base times height divide by 2 problem that we have down here is we don't know the base. So step one is going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem to get the base and then we can find the area. So kind of two steps in this question. So we're going to start by using Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Identify the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle symbol. So there's my c. The a and b we're going to use substitution. So we're going to go ahead and substitute an 8 in for a and the B is unknown, so we're going to leave that kind of as our B value. That's unknown. My C is my hypotenuse, which is 17. You substitution, 17 goes in for C. Solving then, I get 64 plus B squared equals 289. Solving using the hand method. Using the hand method, I would subtract 64, copy, paste. If I haven't used it, I would drag it down. We have 64, take away 64 is 0. And if I haven't used it, I drag it down there. So we get B squared equals... 289 minus 64 on the right-hand side. Go ahead and copy that down. 289 take away 64. Go ahead and use your calculator. It gives us the square, or it gives us 225. Now we have this power here. The only way to get rid of the power of 2 in math is to do the opposite, which is called the square root. So the opposite of a square is to square root. So we take the square root both sides, copy, paste. We get B equals 15. All right, so that is part one. We have the base of the triangle is 15 centimeters. That's part one of the problem. Part two of the problem says we need to find the area still. So to find the area of a triangle, area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, or one half the base times the height. We have the base, it's 15. We just found it. We have the height is eight. We won't need that 17 anymore. Base of the triangle is 15. Height of the triangle is eight. Then we divide by 2. Base times height divide by 2 to find the area of a triangle. So we have 15 times 8 divided by 2. When we take 15 times 8 divided by 2, we end up getting 4 in that spot. Sorry about that. I knew something looked wrong on my screen. So we have 15 times 8 divided by 2 is what I meant to write there. So then we go... Uh, we get 60 centimeters squared is the area of that triangle. Area of the triangle is 60 centimeters squared. That's the amount of space in that triangle. So if we draw a quick picture of what's going on here, if the base is 15, the height is 8. Base times height divided by 2, the area of this triangle and the space inside is 60 centimeters squared. We no longer need that 17. We only need the hypotenuse. 
to find the base hand method. Our homework for tonight is to do real world um, problems using Pythagorean theorem. You do need to draw a picture for each one of those problems. I need a picture and I need your work hand method. Your homework is to finish the rest of this page 25 and all of page 26. No summary for today. Have a great night, eighth grade.